In the next seven days, I'm going to cross the country of Sri Lanka in this awesome vehicle over there, the legendary rickshaw. And to make it more fun, the only navigation tools we are going to use is a paper map and a compass. And of course, I brought two friends with me who were stupid enough to join this stupid idea. I don't think they know what they signed up for. Yeah. Good job, guys. Hey, wait for me. The roads of Sri Lanka are known to be chaotic, full of wildlife and home to some of the craziest bus drivers on the planet. Tuk-tuks aren't made for long distance travel. I have no idea how to repair this thing. It won't turn on again, so we're gonna leave it here on the side of the road. I have never driven a tuk-tuk and we are about to embark on a 1000 km journey with it. Here we go. Yes. Are we gonna make it in one piece? Will our tuk-tuk survive? There's only one way to find out. The plan is simple. We are going to start here in Negombo. That's where we are. And our goal is Tangale, this city down here. Day one, we are going to drive from Negombo whee, all the way here. Let's hope we make it. First, we need to go east. East is this way. Let's go. We are going back because the compass said we're driving north. So we asked the local and uh, yeah, we're going the wrong way. I almost forgot. I didn't show you the tuk-tuk yet. Most important part is our flag. This is the flag of us, the three lines of Swabia, because we all were born in the southern part of Germany, Swabia. If you have never driven a tuk-tuk, it is a bit different to a motorbike. Most people think it's very similar, but you are changing gears here. And move the handlebar here. Then you can change into first gear and go. But you have to give more throttle. There's a little space where we can put our stuff. There's the battery. There's a spare tire. This is the space where we can put our luggage. There's like a million mosquitoes here right now. Oh, damn it. Did you see that? It's like a 50 mosquitoes here. Ah! You can't fit much in here, but it'll have to do. But this is enough space for like two people and a little backpack. This is the motor. If it breaks, we have to find help from outside because none of us know anything about motors. Look, I already broke it. Oh no. Handbrake is over here. At the beginning, driving this thing was pretty scary. Especially since people in Sri Lanka are driving on the left side. Wow! But you'll get used to it pretty quickly. After a few hours, we came upon a street completely lined with Buddha statues. Of course, we had to investigate. We found our first Buddhist temple here. This beautiful white stupa here. I had to switch shirts because I can't go in a religious place like this without sleeves. That's not respectful. Beautiful sleeping Buddha right here. Let's check if he's in Nirvana yet. Yes, he is in Nirvana because you can see if the, the toes are parallel, that means he's not in Nirvana yet. And if they aren't, he is. Here in the middle is Buddha, but then when we look on the side, there's a lot of Hindu gods. There's Ganesha, Shiva. It's totally okay here in Sri Lanka that they mix those religions 
because Buddhism isn't actually a religion, it's a philosophy, so it goes very good hand in hand. Driving without Google Maps was an inconvenience for sure. If you're not sure which turn to take, you always have to stop and find someone to ask. It costs a lot of time, but at the same time you become more aware of your surroundings. You become really conscious of every little turn you take. And you get to interact with locals a lot more. It kind of felt exciting. Got our first lunch here. It's a bun with sambal inside, caramelized onion with spices. Pretty good. And here we have our fried rice for one person. Since we're not using Google Maps, I have to take any restaurant in our way. <laughs> when the owner saw me filming, they wanted to show me something. They just brought me to the back of the restaurant where they make the buns. Locally, that's awesome. I'm not sure if I should eat this meat with my European stomach, but it looks delicious. Great food, guys. If you are in the area, eat here. Sri Lanka is home to more than 7,000 wild elephants and hundreds more in captivity. Many people are trying to sell you elephant experiences, like riding them, feeding them, or taking a bath with them. Unfortunately, the elephants are treated pretty bad in most of those places. But there is one place where you can visit the elephants with a good conscience, the elephant orphanage. We were a bit too late to enter, taking all the wrong turns, but still lucky enough to get a glimpse at them. They just came from their bath and now they are going back to the orphanage. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh, he's wet. This is the elephant museum and they make paper out of elephant poo here. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? This is the elephant poo they take, it's dried. Then they heat the elephant poo here, they put water on it, water. and then the fire next to it. One day boiled, kill the bacteria. One day? Yes, kill the bacteria. These are the plants it usually eats, and later it looks like that. The plant fibers are not completely digested, so they take them, blend it, grate it, and dry it. Once it dries, it looks like that. Wow, this is this is proper paper. Yes, yes. it's thick. This is elephant poo. Yeah. I didn't even know this is a thing that you can make papyrus out of elephant poo. <laughs> this is all oh, made out yeah, yeah. of elephant poo. Got a little souvenir made out of elephant poo. It's getting dark in like an hour, so we should start looking for a hotel now, because we don't want to drive around when it's dark. Too dangerous. Can't believe how expensive mangoes here are. These are 1,200, which is about like four euro for two mangoes. That's German prices. Oh no, it's starting to rain. It just started raining like hell. We're going to go to the next hotel we find because it's no fun driving in this. Look at that. I forgot to mention that it is still the end of the rainy season and it can start pouring here any second. And just when we thought the condition couldn't get any worse, this happened. Our tuk-tuk failed us. In this last distance today, it won't turn on again. So we're gonna leave it here on the side of the road. There's a heavy thunderstorm coming our way and it's lightning there over there. Uh, so yeah, let's be quick. Just when we were about to leave, some locals appeared wanting to see what the problem is. This you can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Or yeah. you did that? Yes, we tried. Yeah. Yeah. And since so many people here have their own tuk-tuks, they know a thing or two about them. Those guys helped us fix up the tuk-tuk. Yeah, we can continue driving now. But those guys were super nice, they helped us without even asking and they didn't even want to want money from us. Yeah, they, they did this for free. After a few more kilometers, we found a cute little local homestay for an incredible price of just $35 a night, including breakfast. Wow, they even have a swimming pool here, a little one. 
we ended the day with a well-deserved beer and got to spend some quality time with the host's family. They even were so nice to prepare us a home-cooked meal so we didn't have to go out in the rain again. What is this called? Man, yeah, it's... Don't eat this. Papadam. This is mine. Papadam. Look at this, guys. This is the dinner they prepared for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. yeah. When you come here, make sure to stay in a homestay. Then you get proper Sri Lankan food from a family. The local family here prepared us some delicious Sri Lankan breakfast. This is egg. This is a kind of pancake. And these are rice doodles with honey inside. Pretty good. Yesterday we drove 130 kilometers the right way. We turned the wrong way a few times, but we don't count that. The owner of the homestay offered us to bring us to a local temple here, the Bible Rock Temple, which is kind of a secret temple that looks similar to a very famous one in the north. I'm excited to check it out. I hope our tuk-tuk will not give up again. Otherwise, we have to find a mechanic to help us. And after we have a look at the temple, we're going to the major city of Kandy and try to make some money there. Okay? First breakfast. Those little steps are just cut into the stone. I've never seen it like that. It's crazy. Nobody's here. We're basically alone. <laughs> Devanagala is called this specific hill over here. Bible Rock is actually over here. I got all mixed up. Super beautiful temple over here. Let's have a look inside. In this temple here, it is believed that the original tooth of Buddha was hidden in here but they moved it a long, long time ago to Candy, and it is believed that the person who has the tooth has the claim to the throne to become king. Our host said that there is another awesome place in the area that we have to check out before we continue to Candy. And after he showed us this, how could we say no to that? So we were on our way to Ambuluvava Tau. Our next destination is up this hill. We heard it's pretty steep road. We don't know if our tuk-tuk is gonna make it because the host, he said, only the best tuk-tuks will make it up there. And we have a pretty old one, so. <laughs> it's not smelling good, guys. The clutch is jumping out all the time. Our tuk-tuk is gonna break down anyway. We decided to let the tuk-tuk cool down a bit, otherwise we're never gonna make it on top. It's super hot. It's a good idea to let it cool down. It's already smoking a bit. Don't die on me! It's giving up at this hill. Yeah, it won't take us there. It just, it just stopped working. Uh, so I'm gonna try alone. <laughs> Let's see. believe we made it actually to the tower it's better than we thought we should give it a name we don't have a name for our tuk-tuk all right the official name of our tuk-tuk is shitty shitty bang bang Ambuluvava tower is one of the most unique religious sites in all of Sri Lanka it's got a steep and narrow staircase going to the top that gets narrower and narrower the higher you get 
It's a little hiding room. Give me a second. I think I, I need to leave my backpack here. <laughs> because I can't even walk up with the backpack. But if you dare to go, you'll get an awesome 360 degree view of the surrounding mountains. For sure nothing for people who are afraid of heights. No. Until now, everything we saw in Sri Lanka has been amazing. But little did we know about the horrors that would still await us tonight in Kandy. You won't believe where we are sleeping tonight. A friend of us recommended this hotel here, which is the spookiest hotel in the world from what I can see from here. It's going to be fun, they said. There's going to be a lot of people, they said. But as it turns out, we were the only guests staying that night. So we did what every reasonable human being would do. We ventured into the dark and explored. They told us to have dinner in this room, but there's no light anywhere. Where's the table, guys? Where is it? Where is it? <laughs> the name of this hotel is Helga's Folly. Helga's mother was actually from Berlin. This is Helga's father shaking hands with Willy Brandt. And this is Helga's mother over there. And that's the infamous Helga. Helga Folly, yeah. The mansion here was built in the 1930s and was the private mansion of these people. Only in the 1990s, it was opened as a hotel. It's crazy how many details this hotel has. We just found out that Helga, Helga Foley, is actually still living in this building. We're about to call her. He's calling her now. She lives upstairs and she's... Uh, Okay, thanks. Hello Helga. How are you doing tonight? I must say I've never been in a, such an amazing hotel. Every Berliner would love it here. Thank you for keeping it up and running. Yeah, we are the only people here tonight, so I've heard, yeah. <laughs> this felt like the beginning of a horror movie. Did we really want to stay here? We had yet to see our rooms. Wow, look at this room. Wow, this is so creepy, guys. Look at that. Who's gonna sleep here tonight? It's not me. Aside from spooky, it turned out that Kandy was a busy, loud and chaotic city. And the weather gods were not on our side today. So we decided to move on to a more scenic area in the mountains, one Sri Lanka is most famous for. We're now at an elevation of 1,800 meters and it's crazy how the vegetation changed, the climate changed, it's much colder, I'm wearing long pants and all the plants are so different. And there's tea everywhere. In the last century, Sri Lanka has been the biggest tea producer in the world. Some of the best tea is grown in this very fields. This is every British person's dream here. You can stay at the old tea factory, play some cricket and drink tea here in the mountain. English breakfast tea and feel like colonialism is still a thing. That's every British person's wet dream, isn't it? This is such a different life up here. It's, it's green, it's cool, and there's no traffic and noise. Even the sounds here are different. Listen, guys. Over there is the Heritage Tea Factory, 
which is a tea factory that was founded in the 1930s. They have been a major producer back in the day uh, of black tea, but now they just produce their own tea for the hotel and they do it in this little factory over here. An average German like me loves tea, but we are stupid enough to not know that there is only one plant called the tea plant. I was today years old when I found out that green tea is from the same plant as black tea and that the different sizes of the leaves make the tea taste different. Like what? This will be my first English breakfast tea in my life and I'm drinking it in tea country. Smooth taste, sure, but to be honest, I, I couldn't differ it from a normal Earl Grey tea. He's the gardener here, and he made this teddy bear here, because why not? <laughs> it's kind of cute. Koala bear. Nice. It's a fat koala bear. Very beautiful. The rest of the day, we just spent relaxing and enjoying the calm of this magical place. Good thing we didn't know yet that our biggest nightmare would be waiting for us the very next morning. It's 6.30 in the morning and we're doing this little hike here to Ella Rock, which is a very scenic walk starting along the train tracks. This is a busy road here. Everybody's taking the train tracks, look. It's easy to see why Ella is one of the most popular spots here in Sri Lanka. It's super beautiful, it's not too hot, it's green, there's animals all around. Hiking is a German second nature and we love to take the unbeaten path in search of cool and unexpected sights. However, doing so in Sri Lanka may not be advisable. This local just stopped us and is taking oh, all the million, all the leeches of us. We have been on the hike for like five minutes and there's like a dozen leeches on our shoes already. We didn't even stop for one second. He said, we should not walk this path here because it's full of leeches. And obviously if you stop just for one second, you have like five leeches on you. So we're going to go back to the normal path. <laughs> this is insane. Why are they so quick? This is their strategy. They're just big, sitting big, on this leaf, yeah. waiting until someone passes and then they take their chances. Look, he's gonna take his chance. Die dran waren. Take. Look, he must have thought someone was walking by and they are looking for someone to jump on. Oh, look, there's just, as we were talking, there's one on my shoe. Oh, they're nasty. So the local, he was so kind to us to bring us back to the righteous path, <laughs> the right path. But now he's still walking with us. I think he's just thinking, uh, I'm going to bring those stupid furnace to the top of the hill. So this is a house of a cobra. Don't put your fingers inside. Just look at this view, guys. How beautiful is this? So we made it to Ella Rock, but we're too late, look. It's foggy. We were sleeping too long. Or I was too slow with my backside. God damn it. Wow. I'm not sure if it was worth it. So now we wait for the fog to clear, hopefully. Otherwise I hiked all this mountain Again for nothing, like in Akatenango. We brought a leech with us to the mountain. Look at that, it's the mountain leech. Mountain leech, oh yeah. Mountain leech, oh yeah. Mountain leech, oh yeah. He's coming for you. So, while we wait for the, the fog to clear up, I'm gonna show you the correct way to wear your pants and socks to be leech free. It's this way, yeah? Don't put the trousers to the bottom because the leech will sneak in and go and you won't even see. So you need to have the socks up and uh, the foot visible so you can really easily spot them, yeah? That's the way of the local. Guys, I think this is the secret uh, why Germans always wear socks like that with their sandals. We solved the mystery. The weight was well worth it. It's clearing up. Look at that. And now to somewhere completely different. Like the Nine Arch Bridge. Also nothing for people who are afraid of heights. One of the most famous sites here in Sri Lanka. It was built in 1921 by the British people to bring tea 
more quick and efficient down to the coasts. And of course, there's a lot of influencers here. Look, there's some. Look at them. Look at them. Everywhere. Influencers everywhere. There's another one. And it is still in use, but we are not using the train to go over there. We are going by Tuk Tuk. It's much more fun. Reverse doesn't work! Why does it never work? Since we have some experience now being a Tuk Tuk driver, it's time to offer our services to the people here. Tuk Tuk? Taxi? Taxi? Taxi, taxi? Sorry? Taxi? <laughs> they have their own tuk tuk. Damn it. Taxi? You what? Taxi, taxi, come. He doesn't have money anyway. Gotta get at least one customer today. Taxi? Taxi? Hi. No taxi? It took a while, but we managed to get our first customer. Even though he didn't pay, we were happy to have him. And with the mission accomplished, we were on our way to the famous national park Horton Plains. But it was probably the worst day of all to go there. Not the best day to spot some animals, to be honest. But we're not giving up. Never. I'm not sure who's watching who. Hello there, how are you doing? This is my new buddy. I call him Edgar. Edgar is hungry, but he's also shy. Look at his tail, it's so funny. Edgar, I have nothing, but you can smell me. Ew. We didn't want to leave cute Edgar behind, but we still had a huge distance to cover down to the south coast. It wasn't until deep in the night that we found out that we also had an illegal passenger on board. So Mr. Edgar was just bitten by a leech, and this is a local trick to stop the bleeding. Put some ash on it. Yesterday evening we met a local guy who invited us to go fishing in the morning. Yep, it's 6 a.m. in the morning and we are about to go in the water and catch some fish like a proper local person. I've never done that before, so it should be fun. But to be honest, I thought the fishing boats are a bit bigger than this. It's quite small. Before we could go out to the open water, we had to collect some smaller bait fish from the angler community. It was the first time for all of us to go fishing, so we had to learn everything from scratch. And I really didn't expect that we would be catching so much fish. Oh, two, voila, wow. two. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. Yay. Wow. This is the biggest fish I've ever caught. Actually, it's my first time fishing. <laughs> After a couple of hours and getting a bit seasick, it was time to hit the road again. For our last day, we have decided not to take the high-speed road. This is the highway. Yeah, that's a highway here. We are going to take the more scenic route along the coast because it's more beautiful, at least we hope so, right? By now, we've driven more than 800 kilometers and we still haven't seen any wild elephants. Yeah, we've seen the ones at the elephant orphanage and some captive ones, but where are the 7,000 wild ones hiding? We decided to actively look for them. Go this way. When in doubt, always take the shitty road. Oh yes, that's where the elephants are. I can smell it. We were just talking to some locals on the road here and they said the elephants are hiding in the jungle right now Ugh. because it's too hot and they're in the shade so let's see if we can find them in the jungle.
We were just driving past this little bay here and guess what's there? Just waiting for us. Hungry. Two fat crocodiles. Yeah, we are directly at the sea. This is like a little bay. And you don't want to be swimming here. No, no, no. So we didn't find any elephants, but we found the next best thing. It's a beetle pushing elephant poo. Oh yeah, there you go, buddy. Oh, now it's getting difficult, huh? Now the road is over. What are you gonna do now, bro? Oh, he's very efficient. But there's another one holding on to the elephant poo. That's the original owner. We will never know what happened, but the other beetle he won and he owns the elephant poo now. There's another challenge, but we don't know how deep it is, but the stones are already below the water, so it's probably not a good idea to go through there. The locals are going through. Oh, and it's getting deeper and deeper, but he's gonna make it. We're gonna drive through the water. We made it! <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> this journey was slowly coming to an end. The last 100 kilometers whizzed by in a flash. I'm still awestruck by the diversity that defines this extraordinary land. From misty hills to golden shores, each step revealed a new layer of beauty. Not to mention the incredibly welcoming people. If anything, this endeavor taught me patience, resilience and the joy found in simple moments. And one of those moments was still waiting for us in the evening. Chowing down on a fish we caught ourselves. Let's see how this red snapper tastes, huh? Mmm. Oh my god. It's so good. What? This is really delicious. We've made it to the other side of the country. And I'm very sad because this adventure is ending today. The name Shitty Shitty Bang Bang was not the right name because it really served us well. Yeah, we will name it from now on the Glorious Bam Bam. <laughs> In any case, this is an awesome tuk tuk. I learned to love it. It had its moments of struggle, but it brought us all the way. If any of you is thinking about coming to Sri Lanka, I can only recommend getting your own tuk-tuk and do a tour with this thing. You're not gonna regret it. Thanks for watching everybody. See you in the next video.